welcome back there is three types of isolation in the hospitals first one is contact and from its name we should avoid contact with those patients who are having these bugs and that means of course washing hands which in all types of isolation we need to wash hands before we enter and after we enter actually with every single patient we should use this or hand based sorry alcohol based solutions wear gloves and gowns before we enter and we discard them before we leave the room big example of this is C. diff FVRE uh, colonization with MRSA norovirus and etc just go back to your infection control policy in your facility and doors can remain open single room of course I prefer now if you don't have single room try to put those patients that require the same contact precautions in the same room the second one is droplet and it's as a ladder in droplet we're going to use again washing hands gloves and gowns plus surgical mask So this is a plus gloves and gowns as we said. Single room of course. And room doors can remain open. If the patients will leave the room here in the contact they need to wear a gowns of course. Uh, as well here if they leave the room they need gowns and surgical uh, and masks surgical masks and big example here is the flu and influenza so that's the droplet third type is airborne which is the most dangerous these people need negative pressure rooms door closed at all times for us the personal protective equipment include as we said hand washing gowns and gloves and N95 respirator and these are should be fitted um, to you um, patient should not leave the room unless it's necessary for a procedure and they should wear also mask and gowns um, again discard all this before you leave the room and big example of this is TB measles and if you remember the SARS was uh, airborne isolation and remember to visit your infection control policy about the bugs and where do they fit into this isolation but it's a ladder right start with gloves and gowns gloves and gowns plus surgical mask and droplet and here it's negative pressure plus n95 respirator if one forget things here is eye protection we need to provide it also and I prefer this all the time with airborne transmission also here use eye protection if you're doing a procedure with respiratory secretion let's say endotracheal intubation uh, bronchoscopy you know these things you will be exposed directly to the respiratory secretion make sure on top of everything here you wear eye protection these are the main three types of isolation you will encounter in each hospital each hospital has its own policy in terms of how long they need to be isolated and sometimes in some hospital even if you have history of MRSA, say two years ago they put you under contact precautions hopefully that was useful thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released. Glad to have you on board.